You know, I honestly do not know how Swedes have done this their entire lives. We are in December now, officially, and it's just absolutely crazy how early it gets dark. Like, right now, the sunset is around 3 p.m., and that's kind of a joke in itself, isn't it? I mean, it's just, you don't really see the sun right now. It's completely cloudy, but the sunset technically is 3 p.m., which means it starts getting dark at, like, 2 p.m., and we still have three more weeks of the days getting shorter. This is crazy. I'm going into my second ever Swedish winter and I honestly don't know how the Swedes have done it. I'm going to LA for a month to just to get some like proper length days and some sunshine. I look back at my videos from last year, like when I first started YouTube and I look at like how pale my skin was and I'm like, wow, I look like a vampire. I feel like I was so ugly back then and you guys still watch the videos. So now when I look terrible, I'm like, well, they, they liked my first videos and I literally was like paper white, uh, but I want to avoid that this year. If you guys don't believe me about how short these days are and how cold it is, check out this footage here from 3 p.m. today. Yeah, that's what we're dealing with here. But with that being said, we're gonna jump into today's video. I had a comment a while ago asking me to talk about literal Swedish translations. Like what if English was like Swedish? You would have some very, very weird words because in Swedish, they use words in like a very practical way. I feel like maybe we have some more uh, words in English just in general and the Swedes will like take two words and put them together and make a new word. So as somebody who's learning the language, that makes it kind of nice because things sort of make sense once you learn the basic words. But when you actually translate these things into English, it can sound a little bit funny. So we're gonna jump into those in this video and what are we waiting for? Let's get started. So a perfect example of this to start us off is the word skrivbord, which means desk in Swedish. And literally skriv and board means like writing table. So if you have to go write a letter or something, or I guess in this day and age, you're probably typing on your computer instead of writing. At least I am. I, I literally, I didn't even have a pen in my house at one point. Somebody was like, all right, sign some documents. And I couldn't find a pen. Literally like all I have is a computer. I work through the internet. That's kind of crazy actually if you think about it. But uh, yeah, so if you need to write something or I guess in this case type something, you go to the writing table. Another one of my favorite ones is the word grown soccer, which literally means green things if you translate it to English. Uh, if you're not a Swedish speaker, just think about what that could be, green things. This is actually vegetables, something that I need to eat more of. Uh, sometimes my brain will just like ignore the vegetable area of the grocery store and just go straight to the other sections of other things that I eat. Like I just gotta find the chili nuts. I eat way too many chili nuts. Like I could eat these all day, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Where was I? Now this whole video is just gonna be me eating chili nuts for the next five minutes. I need to like be more conscious to find those green things in the grocery store. That is a Swedish word that kind of makes sense. Uh, you gotta eat your green things to stay healthy. Then up here you've got something called your tan shot, which is your tooth meat. Uh, yeah, this is actually the Swedish word for gums. So kind of kind of funny there that they call it your gums, your tooth meat. This next one kind of completely threw me off. I didn't really put this together, even though I knew the words individually. When I learned the word for sandwich in Swedish, when I learned that that was smorgås, I literally just associated that with a word that we use in English for like when you have a lot of different foods on a table, we'll use a Swedish loan word, we'll call it like a smorgasbord. So like when there's just a spread of different foods, we're like, oh, this is a smorgasbord, people have different foods on the table or whatever. So I'm like, okay, a sandwich is a smorgas. That makes sense in my head. But I recently just like put two and two together as I was doing the research for this video that smorgas literally means butter goose. So when you're eating a sandwich or you ask for a sandwich, you're like saying, if you were to translate it directly into English, uh, I would like one butter goose, please. Uh, it sounds, sounds a little weird actually when you think about it. Another thing that sounds weird in Swedish is when you go to the system to log it and you want to buy some alcohol. Uh, you might have the people that work there ask for your leg. And leg is like something that is short for legitimation, which is like legitimation, I guess. So to like show your ID, they want to see that you're legitimate, that you're old enough. Uh, so they'll ask you for your leg. And if you go to System Belaget and you're not a native Swedish speaker, 
don't ask them, all right, which leg do you want to see, right or left? I've done that a few times as a joke, and I don't think they were too impressed. They've probably heard that one too many times. But actually, sometimes the people working at System Belaget can be kind of funny. Like, if you are familiar with the system that they have here in Sweden with the alcohol, I mean, I guess if you're not familiar with it, go check it out on my channel. I made a video all about the Swedish state-run liquor store. Uh, but the goal of this company is not to, like, sell more alcohol. They just want to control it. They want to keep alcohol a controlled substance basically. So they never put like alcohol on sales and stuff. But one time just to be funny, uh, it was Black Friday actually and we went to System Belaget and you know, I was like, all right, let's just ask the lady like if they have any special Black Friday sales at, uh, at the System Belaget. So I get up there and I'm like, all right, I guess I'll show her my American ID so that she knows that I'm just kind of like messing around, that I'm not a real Swede yet. Uh, and I'm asking her when I get to the front, I'm like, oh, uh, since it's Black Friday, I know there's a lot of places in the mall that are having sales. Do you guys have any sales? at System Belaget, kind of knowing that the answer was going to be no. But she actually fooled me. She was like, oh yeah, we have some sales here. And I was like, wait, really? And she's like, no, we don't have any sales here. And then we started talking about uh, the alcohol laws in America. And like, sometimes there will be sales on alcohol in America. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, but sometimes you can find some really relaxed and just fun, easygoing people working at System Belaget. I was surprised. The lady working there actually got me on that one. I actually believed for a second that they had some sales at System Belaget. But if they ask you for your leg, just show them your ID and save them the trouble of going through that horrible joke that they've probably had way too many times if they work there. The next word is fart hinder. Now this one just sounds funny in English because of the fart in the beginning, but fart is really just a Swedish word for speed. And literally this translation is speed obstacle or so like a speed bump. And in Sweden, they don't always have like the bumps that we have in America. Sometimes they'll have these little things where it's like the two lane road turns into a one lane road. So in order to control people from speeding, they have to go into the one lane like cautiously and then back into their own lane. Uh, so it makes sense that it would be called a speed obstacle. I mean, sometimes they have bumps here in Sweden as well, but they also have different kinds of obstacles that we don't really, I never really seen that in America. Uh, but yeah, that is the fart hinder, the speed obstacle. This next one kind of threw me off when I was working at a school here in Sweden. It was my first week and the teacher before me had given descriptions of all the students, uh, which ones study hard, which ones are, you know, I need to watch out for, <laughs> who, are the, who are the class clowns that are going to make my life difficult. Uh, but one of the words that he had used to describe one of the students was plughest. And when I put this into Google Translate, keep in mind, this was like one of my first months in Sweden. I look in plughest and I literally got nowhere with Google Translate and I broke the word down and I was like study horse is it study horse and actually this is a word that they use to describe somebody who is studying a lot working really hard and it makes sense because in English we have the word workhorse and so this is like the school version of that. A study horse is a plughest. And the last one I want to talk about in this video today is the word dam suger, which literally means dust sucker. Yes, this is the word in Swedish for a vacuum cleaner. Because uh, basically when you vacuum, you're sucking up dust. I mean, that's a good word to just show like how practical Swedish is. You've got dust, you need to suck it up. I need to go get the dust sucker. All right, guys, so I just wanted to keep it short today. I wanted to make a video just because I've been so busy uh, with the move to Stockholm and uh, doing some other things, getting started with my new company up there, uh, doing the marketing for a new startup up there. It's super exciting and you know, it, I just had a lot going on, but I wanted to make a video. This one was one that was requested. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have ideas for other videos that you want me to make in the future, let me know down in the comments because you guys have had a ton of good ideas. And that's one of the things that I think makes this community so great. You guys having good ideas and being interactive and leaving comments and stuff. I love to read through all of your guys' comments and things. Even if I don't write back on all of them, I do read a lot of them, especially when I first post the video, I'll usually be in that comment section for the first few hours, reading through what you guys have said. And it really means a lot to me when you guys are a part of what I'm doing here. You guys are the reason that I'm doing this and it feels amazing. So with that being said, thanks so much for watching today's video and hopefully I'll have another video for you guys soon. Even with my crazy schedule, I wanna make sure that I'm continuing to bring content to you guys that you guys enjoy watching. So with that being said, See you guys in the next one.